Welcome to Adult 2, section of the tutorial. Uh, at this point, if you've gotten this far in the tutorial, uh, you should be doing very well. You should be proud of yourself, it's really good. Uh, and you should be a little bit better at the game, more familiar with things, so I'm gonna actually pick up the pace a bit. Um, so I will be going through things a little more quickly. Uh, but you're gonna be fine. You got this. One thing I like to state right off the bat is, um, if you did everything correct, you got 13 arrows. Ruta's letter was on C right as child. When you come back as adult, you should have FWNB, just like this. If you didn't, you did something wrong with the bottle adventure. And you gotta figure that out. You either didn't have correct number of arrows, or you had the wrong item on C right, or something like that. But uh, this is what inventory should look like at this point. like that and that's what your equips and buttons should be uh, so let's get into it uh, as soon as you spawn in Temple of Time you're gonna serenade out and this will be the same setup I showed you to enter water clip in adult one uh, the only difference is you're gonna want to set FW. So you do your setup. After you shield turn, you can set FW here. And the frames are exactly the same with uh, Deku Stick as they were with the drawn sword. I saw I showed you the sword when it's drawn. It's the same frames. Enter water now. mash B to get in there quicker. Alright, you got two options. Uh, as always, we'll start off with the optimal one, and then uh, something... Uh, we're not going to really be doing beginner stuff anymore, because we're kind of past that point. Um, so, I'll show you the optimal stuff, and then preferences and backups. That's, that's about where we're at in this tutorial. So, uh, Optimally, you're going to want to go right to the boss now, and you're going to want to do a Hess. Uh, you're gonna want to get an angle kind of like this, and a little bit past this line. See this line right here? So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna want to back walk has it. If you cannot do back walk hasses, uh, do the super slide method. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, hold on. There we go. A little further up. Alright, there we go. Just like that. At this point, you equip Hookshot over Rock Arena. You hold that, and you're gonna get ready to basically hess past the Tektite. Uh, there's two methods you can do. You can either opt to target the Tektite, which I do not like. Um, I've seen it work for some people though, but this setup basically just wants you to do this. And right before the exiting the platform, you just hold down. You just release target and hold down. So you get your hess started past the Tektite. Oh, whoops. Has started, past the Tektite. You can target it like that. I've seen some people do that. It should be fine. Um, but it's really preference. You, you gotta practice it, try it out. Uh, I don't really go for this in runs yet. I really should, though, to be honest with you. Because it's not that bad. But I'm kind of a little scared. But I'll show you what I still do. <clears throat> Something a little easier. Uh, so when you first climb up, you target one ESS left and go to about here. And you can do a super slug. It's a little slower, waste an extra bomb, and uh, it's not that bad, but yeah, it's it's less optimal. So after you get here, you want to equip the hover's hold target uh, shield to keep your super slide and down. When you get past the tech tight here, you want to release target. And then same deal, right before the platform, you release... R and you kind of like shift from straight down to down left and that should get you on the platform nice and easy uh, so now I'll show you a backup in case you fall you're bound to fall at some point you don't want to FW out and you don't want to serenade um, those backups kind of suck so what you can do is go to this torch oh whoops we're gonna need hookshot 
and you can actually hookshot clip, similar to the freezer to Nice Cavern. And just void, void yourself out. There you go, and you get sent back up here. <clears throat> That's the quickest backup. You do lose hearts, however, so... Uh, one thing I'd like to mention, if you end up doing backups or there's a lot of enemies in Adult 2 that can actually hurt you really badly, like Noboru and uh, Bongo hits pretty hard, maybe even Twin Rova, right? And you might have low health at a certain point. Uh, you can use this fairy as a backup. You no longer need this fairy. So if you find yourself low on health, just use it. It's all good. You don't want to die, because if you die, you lose FW on B, and you'll be in big trouble. You'll have to get FW back on B if you want to continue, or it just straight up kills the run, so... It is not worth it. Just burn that fairy if you need to. Uh, okay, so... No, whoops. Next, I'll show you the BK skip. Okay, after you get whatever method used to cross the gap. Uh, this is really easy to avoid these spikes with hovers. You just roll up the right side. It's that easy. Easy peasy. Uh, so the optimal method for the BK skip... Um, so there is a two-bomb method. It's like a bomb push. I don't actually remember how to do it. It's not that important in Hundo. You should have, like, way more bombs than you need. So I'm not going to show that method, but I will show you the two-bomb hover. Uh, you insta-drop, turn around, drop, get ISG, drop it like that. And then you would do that, drop a bomb, pull stick, and you can swing the stick on, uh, I believe it's three frames. Let me make a save state. So the first frame is big red, and it clips you through the boss door just like that. Oh. I believe this works. First explosion works. Let's see if second works. Second explosion works. I think third is when it starts to fail. Third explosion works. Okay, fourth is where it fails. So this is a four frame trick to get that jump slash. It's it's very easy to do it unbuffered. <clears throat> the first working frame is big red though, so be aware of that. And uh, you can just simply swing again. It's that e you can just mash your stick. It it's that easy once you get in. Not a problem. Uh, so the other method, if you're not good with the, the two bomb staircase hover, oh whoops, wrong one. Um, what you can do is either get ISG off the bomb and do something like this. Time it. Just like that. You can do that method. Um, you can get it off the door. You shouldn't worry about sticks because you have a million sticks, so you can break it. Um, if you're worried about breaking sticks, you can do something like this. I did a down roll to ESS and then like that. You can do something like that. That's one way to get it. But you shouldn't really worry about breaking sticks. You need to break them later on anyway. Like that. You can do it without breaking it. Uh, I recommend uh, trying out the two. It's really not bad. But if not, you got the other methods. And then we can go to the Morpha fight. Uh, what you want to do is just jump, pull stick, and jump slash into the cutscene. This is for a uh, specific reason. It's just in case you can get the potential for a quick Morpha kill. It's super rare, by the way, but I do it just in case the oppor opportunity presents itself. <clears throat> uh -huh. 
<coughs> Excuse me. All right, so for Morpha, uh, pretty easy. Uh, I, I mentioned the jump slash into the cutscene for this reason, so sometimes you can get lucky and... Oh, I missed it. Sometimes you can get lucky and just pull her out immediately and you would have a jump slash stored. Um, the trick to this is to shoot, like, kind of to the side of the nuclei there. Like that. If you shoot directly in the middle, it doesn't seem to grab her. It's something to do with the collision. I don't know, but I like to shoot from the side, just like that. Uh, and you can kind of, like, get her close and just simply walk through her and pull stick and then turn around and start crouch stabbing, just like this. You just spam sticks. It's really that easy. That's all you have to do. After this boss fight, you're gonna have your first uh, Ferris Wind cutscene skip. Saves like two and a half, three minutes or something. So you kind of want to get the, these cutscene skips. They're pretty important. There are two of these FW skips that are actually required. Uh, they're not skips; they're wrong warps. Get into that when we get there, though. But you want to just roll out. You hold down and roll out. Grab your heart. Uh, so if you're feeling brave. Uh, there's an interesting kind of, it's not really a setup, but if you did that movement I did, you can hold the upright notch, do four steps and hit B, and it should work. Something like that. There you go. That's what it looks like. Uh, I don't recommend this at all. That is just like so risky, man. But it is consistent. If you get really good at it, you can go for it. It's just four steps. I took three. Well, this is that. And then uh, the sane person one way to do it is to target this. Turn right, roll. Side hop and back into the wall like this. Two side hops and then side, you know, like a side roll thing. Then you can just uh, hit simply up and B and you're, you're literally one step away from the warp. So if you just hit up and B, it should work. There it is. And uh, these, these setups are what get you one step away. There it is. Practice this. You don't want to mess these up. Uh, so you know when to hit A on this first option. When your hearts in the HUD start to fade away. It's like 12 frames or something like that. It's very lenient. Um, you don't want to do it early. You don't want to do it too late. But when they start to fade... Like that, you're good to go. Okay, there you go. Next up we have a hookshot jump and the backup. Up next we have hookshot jump. <clears throat> I'm only going to show you one method for this as well. There are two different ways to do it. I'm going to show you the two frame trick. So, uh, you just want to pull hookshot um, when you're landing. Turn around, hook shot around here in this dark spot so you don't fall. Go anywhere over here, kill the skull. Uh, now you wanna, I look for a certain texture uh, where this like white blotch is, kinda, is where I look to hook shot and I can't, there's like a, a darker spot to the left here that I line up. So if I just line up literally like this, this is the position that I want right here. Go like that, ESS left. Now you wanna do, two uh, backflip frames. You want bow, hookshot, ocarina. Uh, ideally, you would uh, do this unbuffered and land on that frame right there, but I'm gonna show you what it's like buffered though. Uh, so, that's one frame, that's two frame. On that frame, this is a frame perfect trick by the way. You wanna either hit ocarina or FW. We'll do ocarina for now. And that gives you what's called token delay. Uh, it makes it so that um, you did collect the token indeed, but see how I look up. You actually do cull it, so it delays it. And it sets you up for hookshot jump coming up here. Play your sun song. Do a couple rolls. And then shoot the sun for fire arrows. <clears throat> uh, 
I'm going to show you the quick setup because I think it's actually extremely easy. Every runner should be doing this. The other setup is slow. You basically just target this uh, tree and notice the uh, hilt of Link's sword. How I have it lined up against the edge of the tree like there. That's where you want to line up. And from there you ESS right one time. Target and side hop. And uh, then you have a, a two frame trick. Um, I'll try to show you the frame. So you'll hold hook shot. Make sure you're holding hook shot and hold straight down. And then you want to pause on either this frame or this frame. Uh, what I tend to look for is notice the slash marks on the tree. Oh, whoops. I look for the slash marks personally. Um, it's just one of those things where you gotta like look at a texture. Basically, when the hook shot is right below the third slash mark, the very edge of it, that's how I know where to pause. Uh, that's what it'll look like. Oh, one more frame. That's the working frame. Then you equip bombs over bow and hold down out of unpause. Then you clear the text and hold up. And that's how you get your hookshot jump. That's a two frame trick, by the way. There are two frames that work, so. I got the lower one. If this ever happens and you're falling short, you'll be able to tell because th this is going to be short right here. You can just jump slash. Oh, I did not make it. Rip. I swear now to play this game. There it is. Okay. This is the further up frame. I should have jump slash earlier on that one. So the the earlier frame, you have to jump slash a little early, and the later frame, which is what I just got here, you're fine. You'll clear it. And that's how you get your fire arrows. So just recognize those frames. Practice it. It is what it is. Uh, say you mess this up. Oh, dang. I messed it up. What do I do? Uh, there's a backup with the scarecrow. Get your bombs. And you want to go over here and basically aim toward the Scarecrow. And uh, you're going to want to do a Mega Flip into an ESS. Try that again. After the Mega Flip, hold ESS down right. <coughs> Sorry. Try it from over here. You do have to go kind of down the hill a little bit. Ah, there it is. Get your Scarecrow song. You can also opt to just do this instead of token delay, if you hate token delay. It's all good. Then you can uh, Hester Super Slide. At this point, I'm pretty confident you'll be doing Hesses anyway. I'll show you where to stand to get the Scarecrow going. You want to stand about here, where this dark spot is. It's slightly darker. But you want to stand against this edge. Play Scarecrow. You'll be able to shoot the tip of its hat. You can see his hat there, just above it. Oh, that easy. Get your fire arrows. And that is token delay and the backup. Okay, after fire arrows, let's go on the assumption that you did the token delay for now. <clears throat> Wanna backflip? Pull a bomb? Do your swag house. Right to Scarecrow. Okay, and uh, you can do a Hess to the lab now. Play Scarecrow. So now there's a Gwei here that will harass you. If your movement was perfect, he'll come right for you every time. It's basically guaranteed. Uh, once in a while, he will troll you if your movement was off and he'll be behind the lab. Uh, if he does that, you can try to, like, go up, but honestly, man, he's probably gonna get you. Like, once in a great while, you'll get lucky, and he won't get you. Wow, I got lucky. I highly recommend killing him. 
after that, uh, up right on the notch, jump off and pull hook. You should land right in front of the door. You can then go over here. Uh, look at your rupee count at this point. You're going to need at least 10. So if you do not have 10, if you have less than 10, get one of these red rupees. You need it. Uh, once you hear the bell after the dive, that means you can get the heart piece. You want to then equip stick here. Iron boots. Let's pretend like we don't have enough rupees, so we'll get it. Hit that. And then once you're over the skull, you can unequip boots. It's like that. Climb up. Talk to the man jamming out to the sick beat. He's just jamming, bro. There's your HP. And then you simply exit. Now you want to either Hess or Super Slide out of here. At this point, I do recommend Hessing. Or you can back walk if you hate both of them. Okay. One, two, three, four rolls. Stand kind of the right and shoot the left side of the ladder. Should clip through. No, you're making me look like a liar here. Try that again. Shoot around there. There we go. One, jump off, pull bum. Around here. Now you're gonna want to get this guy to pop out. Two rolls and then hookshot his ass. Talk to him. There's your HP. That's why you needed the 10 rupees. Don't forget those. All right, now, um, this is pretty important. Uh, if you can't has, um, that sucks. You're gonna lose a lot of time. Try to do it the best you can. Uh, I suppose you can try a super slide, but given the slopes and all that, it's not gonna help as much. But basically, after coming out of the grotto, turn like that, jump over, Get your house started. It's like this. Hold hold the SS right. Now what I like to do is stay along this path. There's like a walkway right here. And I ESS left at that point. And then you should go right through the fence. Easy clear. And then you're going to want to go right into the lawn lawn. Just like this. Another house to the fence. Once you go to the fence, you're going to do a staircase hover. I already went over those. Do your do your favorite method, either two or three. I try to go for the two. It's optimal. Three is fine. You have enough bombs, though. Everything went well, you should hear the wolf cry as soon as you exit, just like that. That's perfect movement. And then you just want to hit opponent's butt until you get about here. Uh, so you want to line up along this path right here, just to the right of the sign. And this will spawn a big Po. Uh, I'll show you a backup Po in case you screw this up. Everyone screws this up for a while when they first start, but uh, it's something you get used to. So you want to line up like this, start to slow down once you're at the sign, and then pull the arrow. One, two, just like that, that's the timing. Um, it's real quick. And this is going to go into your first bottle. This is where you should, this bottle should be cleared. You should have drank the normal Po in the graveyard in Child 2. If you didn't, make sure you drink it now to clear it, otherwise you're losing this Po and you're losing time. Uh, make a save state and show you a backup Poe. So if that Poe disappears, if you couldn't get the little little bastard, what you can do is come along this way. Go to Lon Lon. And go to the right of this tree here. And once you're around the tree, wind up. There's your backup. And if you miss that again, you can just go back to this Poe. Just go back and forth with these two if you miss them until you get them. This Poe would be here if I didn't kill it. That would be backup after backup. But anyway, after you get the Poe, 
Do side hops. Go in here to the Podega. Get ready to do elemental equip swaps. Welcome to the Podega. Uh, I'm just gonna show you real quick how to do this, and I'm not gonna do all all nine. It's a pain. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you the concept real quick, and then we'll move on. Uh, so you need to give this guy ten pose to get a bottle, and it it you may say like, oh, what's going on? We already have four bottles. Well, we need to get the all the bottles from source. Uh, this third bottle was duped, but essentially what what the rules the way the rules are written is like. If you do the things necessary to get the source bottles, it doesn't matter where it places it in your inventory, it's fine. So even though it will put the bottle you get in item slot one, um, it's fine. It still counts towards source, so all good. Um, Alright, so to do this, you want to put the Po, the real Po, on C left, and then Din's C down, and Fire Arrows C right. Okay, this is where you start. Um, you would then equip swap bow, like just bow, over the Po, like this. And this will give you two Po's. Now with, with this equip swap Po, you want to sell the one that is on C right to this guy. I'll show you what happens after this. Practice this part, trust me, you do not want to screw this up in runs. Practice. Okay, so you notice uh, we no longer have this Poe, but we do have one of the Poe's on C button. This is very dangerous because if you overwrite the C button Poe, uh, you will lose it, you'll have to go get another one. It's going to be a, a mess, it's not anything anyone wants to do. So you got to make sure the equips after this first sold one are correct. So I'll show you what to do. You want to, after you sell it, right, we go into the menu, we hit DINs once again on C down, just like that, to switch it, and then fire arrow C right again, and then you repeat. Bow over Po. Okay, sell the one on the right, and rinse and repeat. You do this nine times. Uh, nine equip swaps you want to do. Nine fake Poes, and then once you get to the ninth one, you can then give him the last one. But make sure you count, either look at rupees or have a notepad, write it down, have chat tell you, something. Nine equip swap pose, and the last one will be your number 10, okay? Any questions on this, feel free to message me, you know, message the Discord, ask other hundo runners, anything like that. It can be a little weird at first, but you'll get it, I promise. We'll move on from here. After you get the bottle, you should have full rupees and your inventory should look like this. And before you leave, you want to equip your long shot, bombs, and sticks. And get out of the podega. Two rolls up. Uh, optimally, you want to pull a bomb now and you want to hess over that bridge. This is similar to the adult one hess. Pull bomb around here. And you can open this grotto. Uh, if you can't do that, Hess, it's really not a big deal. Um, just roll it out like this. Back walk this, back flip, pull a bomb. Just like this. This is good movement if you can't do that, Hess. The Hess isn't bad, though. Don't be afraid to try it. Okay, standing here, you can get the skull. Easy. Then optimally, you do want to pull a bomb uh, midair, start hessing. Uh, if you cannot backwalk hess, don't bother doing a standing one there. It's not worth it. Uh, just backwalk it. Do a single roll, set FW. Uh, this is extremely important that you set FW at this entrance. It has to be this entrance right here for a wrong warp coming up. It, it doesn't work anywhere else, so make sure it is this entrance. You pull a bomb. You're going to want to do your stair hess into Death Mountain Trail. Just like that. If not, just roll it out. Next up, we have a hess right into DC again. This is second trip DC. 
Uh, hug the left side here. Oh, to avoid L Boulder. It's like that. All right, so optimally you're going to want to do a zero zero zero. Uh, there's another one here. The collision. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up actually. Oh no, it doesn't work. Oh yeah, so this collision is weird. Um, a zero zero zero. The hitbox spawns here, but only after you go through that loading zone. I don't know why this happens, by the way. It's really strange. But the movement would be to take an angle kind of like this and start a hess. Uh, so you would do like this, start the hess like this. Insta shield drop a bomb right there. Get your hover boots on. There it is. And once you're past that dark spot, you can pull another bomb to blow this up. Just like that. You want to slash this guy. Oh, he screwed me up. Stand about here, along this line. We'll wait for these guys to die so I can talk. Uh, normally, you would slash the first metapod dude here and then call the other two by targeting this wall, just like this. And you can actually hookshot the token, just like that. Uh, so that's one way to do it. If you are not good at that, you can just simply do a Hess like this. Lol. Jeez, dude. Hessing is hard, though. Okay, there it is. Uh, so if you don't want to do the zero, 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 I recommend trying it. But if you don't want to do it, you can do this. Take your hover boots off here. You're going to want to break your sticks and kill all these guys. Stand right in this corner. And you can kill the gold skull here. Absolute worst case scenario, if you can't do this for whatever reason, uh, you should be able to, shouldn't be a problem. You can actually Scarecrow Song. Uh, this is just a piece of information I figured I'd relay. So this is absolute worst case scenario, then you can just be like, pop, get it that way. Not a problem, right? Um, if you're really bad at Hessing, you can also Super Slide or Mega Side Hop, actually. So you can get a, a Super Slide. You got enough bombs. It's perfectly fine, dude. You can do that. That works. Uh, you can also do a Mega Side Hop. Just like this, and then equip hovers and simply hold down. And you do make it that way as well. Um, and the, the worst case scenario, say you're out of bombs. I can't imagine you'd be out of bombs at this point, but say you are. Uh, you can just go on old school platforming. This is fine. There's nothing wrong with this at all. It's just a little slower. And that's it. That's that's the beginner intermediate stuff and all that. Um, so say you did the zero zero zero. We'll just go off of that assumption. Here we go. Oh, whoops! I already got the skull. Um, that's fine. I'll just do it again. Let's go on the assumption here. It doesn't hurt to show it again, I suppose. Loading zone area, pull the bomb, drop it, take off the boots, hit the little metapod dude, go over here, get your skull. Okay, good. Do a roll, do a roll, get in the right corner. Uh, you can do a single ESS turn left if you're... This is really fast if you're good with S turns. Uh, or you can just manual aim. You know, that's fine too. Um, I like to do a single S turn. It's fast as hell. I can do it. Yeah, I, I like to do that personally. And then we have mouth Hess coming up. Uh, you want to target, turn around, don't move, and get a Hess started here. Okay, equip boots again. Uh, when you get to the dark area, you can do the equivalent of like a couple S turns. Hesh just like that. Uh, this is very risky. Um, it's not easy to do this. <laughs> so, this is gonna require a lot of practice, but basically it skips a Navi text like that. 
and it's really fast. If you might Hess up here, and you can actually, like, void out from the Hess. Let me see if I can get it. Um, let me kill this guy. Let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Just like that. So if you mess up the Hess, you do void out. You lose a shit ton of time. Uh, just try to practice and, you know, do, like, risk-reward management. You're gonna have to figure that out. But that's what it looks like anyway. Um, I can show it one more time. Test to mouth. So you're here, you target, you turn around. Oh, whoops, the metapod, dude. What happened there? I'm supposed to call him. Just like that. Equip boots around here. And then, like I said, like once you get to the loading zone, you want to do a couple ESS uh, right. Just like this. Oops. Like that. And then ESS right again. Get in the mouth. It's not an easy trick. Just like that. Targeting this dude can uh, be a disaster. It worked out that time, but trust me, it can be a disaster. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, if that doesn't work, what you can do is just simply roll it out, back walk as always. You can hit the Navi text trigger, it's perfectly fine, but the important part is to get into the mouth here, finally. Uh, if you did not do Jabu Rung Warp, uh, I'm gonna show you this real quick um, before we do the switch. So if you didn't do Jabu Rung Warp, you missed the skull back here. You're gonna have to go over here. You get extra bombs if you want, just like that. You jump off, pull a bomb, climb up. That should explode. A couple side hops like this. And then there would be a skull there in theory. Get that skull. You would then need to ground jump. I recommend this. Nice and easy. Just like that. And then you would go back to this room. That's if you didn't do Jabber Rung Warp. If you did, uh, you can then do the switch delay. Basically, you hit Navi at the same time. Uh, on the same frame, you hit the switch. Um, see. Save state. I recommend, if you're trying to buffer this, holding shield and target. And uh, what happens is, when you're on the correct frame, you won't see shield anymore. Right there. And then you can just hit C up, out of button, pause. And there's your door delay. This is not an easy trick. It is frame perfect. Uh, you can do it unbuffered. It's uh, not the easiest, but that's what it looks like. Uh, basically, what it, the, the trick to doing this unbuffered, it's kind of weird. It You back off, and when you're like halfway into the fall, you hold C up. And for whatever reason, it seems to work like the first instance that your feet touch something. So, like, like that. I was like halfway through the fall and I held C up and it seemed to work. I don't know why that does that, by the way. But that's the idea behind it. So you do that halfway through, you hold C up. Uh, it's not like you need to time it per se, but yeah, that, that's the concept. Do a couple rolls. You're gonna fight King Dodongu. Uh, you should know how to kill this guy, but I guess I'll show it anyway. Why not? comes over here, you gotta throw a bomb in his mouth. Whoops. You gotta do that for swag. It's actually required. Just kidding, you don't have to do it. 
two, two stick jump slashes, that's all. It's like the hardest boss in the game, basically. Timing a stick jump slash is optimal. You can just crouch stab him, it doesn't matter. Alright, well, we're gonna have to do the, the, the scary wrong warp. This is the first scary one. This brings you to the Nocturne cutscene. And you're not gonna be able to get Nocturne any other way. Unless you do, like, Fire Temple, and then don't do 1080. And it just loses a million years, like, you need to get this, basically. Uh, the first setup that I'm gonna show you is the buffered method. Out of the cutscene, you target and simply hold up. Don't roll, just simply hold up. Target, side roll, side hop, side roll, and then you want to side hop and pause when Link's feet hits the warp like that. And uh, this doesn't lose time because you need to equip Ocarina anyway. It's a little risky though. I don't like doing this one, but yeah, if you get that frame right there, you're good and you just hit B out of unpause. And the cue for this is when the the two black bars, like the tar targeting bars uh, on the top and bottom, when they start to fade, that's how you know uh, where to hit A uh, to warp out. So they start to fade. Boom. That's good. That'll warp you to Nocturne cutscene, just like that. Uh, so that's one method. The other method that I personally use is do this. Shield turn and back walk. And then after this, you target again, roll into King Dudong there, side hop right, untargeted side roll, and you're one step away from the warp, so you can do a nudge B. This does work as well. Uh, don't mess this up. If you do, it's probably GG. <laughs> so get good with it. Don't let fear rule you, man, and you're gonna strive for greatness, all right? You got this. Uh, you'll get Nocturne after this and, you know, play the song, you'll learn it, it's a cutscene and all that, and, and I will see you after the cutscene. After the Nocturne cutscene, you'll be placed at this exact position here. If you did everything, um, you know, optimally perfect, it will be nighttime. Uh, if you messed up movement somewhere along the way, Lake Hillia, Death Mountain Trail, it might be daytime. If that is the case, you want to play Sun Song. Um, you'll be able to tell because... There'll be people... Let me show you what daytime looks like. There'll be people spread about. Right behind you and stuff. Like, you'll see those guys dancing, that old man chilling, right? He's just... He's doing his thing. Uh, if you see that, just play Sun Song. Because uh, you want it nighttime. So after that, you do a, a simple roll. And you're gonna want to shoot this box. Shimmy a little bit, shoot the roof here. You want to break a stick, grab that token, and uh, you can do a little recoil. So after I grab the token, I actually flick to the left and targeted, so it looks like this angle. You want to roll off the roof, go neutral, and spam stick, and it should put you right in the loading zone. That breaks another stick, so it just looks like that. Oh, that wasn't perfect the second time, but it was good. Uh, say you... Oh no, I messed up. Say you do that, uh, oh, like, say, say you land down here. You can actually just go up this way. Just like that. A little backup, no big deal. Grab the HP. And, uh, this cow right here is good. Say, uh, I mentioned earlier in Death Mountain Crater in Child 2. Uh, if you mess up by voiding out a couple times and you need to get your health back, drink milk. This is the cow that you would then refill your milk at. So you want to make sure you have a milk bottle. At this point, you're going to need milk for later, but this is the cow that would help you out. That's the homie. Um, so I just figured I'd mention that real quick. But anyway, get the heart piece here, and you're going to Nocturne now. Head off to Shadow Temple. Now, there is a bomb push method. Uh, for it to be faster, you would need to do the bomb push from here and then also do a distance mega. 
in Shadow Temple across that gap. I don't recommend it to anyone. That strat is so dumb. And it's going to be extremely difficult to save any time with it, so I'm not even going to bother covering it. But just be aware. I'm making it aware that there is a bomb push method if anybody actually does want it. Oh, whoops. Ah, dang. Alright, whatever. I gotta play Nocturne again. I don't have a cutscene for this. Um, no, oh, I guess I don't, actually. So let's just pretend. <laughs> let's pretend I was on the pad. It's all good. I had those equipped. So I spawn here. You want to just start back walking. Backflip like this. You would then equip shoes, uh, long shot, and dins. You do dins fire to open up shadow. And once that's open, you can just roll in. Now here you target the wall, three side hops, and then you should be lined up to do that. There's a text box you need to clear. And uh, the first thing I'm going to show is Truth Spinner Skip. You want to get in the corner. One, two... Oops. In the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Side roll. ESS right. Hold shield for this one, because this is pretty precise. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six side ups. Then do two ESS to the right. You want to pull, chew, drop it, delay a little bit on the roll. Don't roll immediately. You roll immediately. It's not gonna work. But you wanna slightly delay it and get to this frame where the shield first appears. Then hold down. And this gives you a distance mega on a perfect angle. Then equip uh, bombs and stick. Uh, release target and simply hold R and do a backflip here. Then pull a bomb and you're going to do a mega. You get an anti-grab just like that. Pull bomb. Blow that wall up. Now you want to clear your FW text at this door. It's the second option. Uh, the reason why you have to clear FW text is... Uh, it does not dispel on wrong warps. It does on cutscene skips, but wrong warps specifically, it does not dispel. So you have to manually do it. And you only do wrong warps in the child dungeons, so there's only gonna be two of them. Um, so you would then be in this room. Uh, if you cannot do that truth spinner skip, uh, let me go over something real quick. I'll show you something kind of cool. You don't have to do it. Uh, you can either lens. If you don't want to do lens, uh, you can do your bomb and stick equip. And you can guess. If you're not doing the truth spinner skip, I highly recommend just using lens anyway, but... Oh dang, it negated my ISG. But anyway, what you can do is do a counterclockwise. Always oh, skip this first one. It's never going to be the first one. This is why I recommend lens, by the way. And you would just pick up magic later. But you can do this. And try to find the correct one. Your ISG keeps you from falling. So that's one option. Um, I do recommend, if you're gonna not going to do Truth Spinner Skip, I do recommend just le doing Lens. And what you would do is, this is a magic perfect route, what, would you, what you would do is just pick up magic in a different spot, which I'll show you later. But yeah, those are your two options. Just learn, just learn the skip, it's easy man, you know, just do it. Alright, so once you've done all that, you're in this room, uh, you can overlap a weird shot with FW. Uh, you drop it overhead, side hop, flick right, and set FW. This strat's really hard, by the way. <laughs> Took a lot of practice to do this. You can then target, pull your hook, and do a weird shot. Just like that. That's one method. 
Um, if you're not into that, what you can do is just weird shot from this wall. Uh, or do like weird shot from here. It's up to you. But either way, um, you gotta get that key with a weird shot. If not, you can collect the rupees in this room. It's really slow though. I messed that up, so I'll just weird shot from here. Okay. Alright, so for this key, uh, target it and open it, and I'll show you good movement out of here. You wanna roll, 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 hop up, flick, and side hop. That's really good movement out of there. Roll, roll, roll. Uh, two options once you get through this door. You can either weird shot here. Just like that. Um, that's only if you're going to just roll this out. If you're going to do shadow hess here, you have to do the hess, otherwise you get hit by the blades. So this is what shadow hess is going to look like. It has like this. You would then go to the right side, get your hess started. Equip hover boots and pull stick. Turn into the wall, turn, make sure it's straight. Oh, whoops, I messed up. Ah, oh, this, this trick is actually so hard. So when you get on the second platform past this first uh, blade, you're going to want to ESS twice to the left, just like this, and jump slash toward the end. You land on the platform here. Now this shadow house t saves 10 seconds over just rolling it out. So you're going to have to do a risk reward management on that. It's 10 seconds, just so you know. This is the alternative. You can jump slash here. Jump slash toward the end of the fall on those two. That's what it looks like. Now here you can either choose to do... There's three things you can do. You can do the weird shot, the like like clip, or the kill all enemies. I recommend either like like click, or like like clip, or kill all enemies. No, sorry. Weird shot or like like clip. Killing all enemies is slow. Sorry. Jeez, dude. Have some more coffee. If you want to do the weird shot, it's optimal. <clears throat> I'll show you how to do that real quick. Target the swall. Three side hops. Roll. One, two. Long roll like this. Start cooking. This is the optimal method. This is what all the top runners just go for at this point. Just like that. Uh, if you want to do the like like clip, uh, upon entering you target, turn left, one, two, three side hops, pull hook, start back walking. Then when you get here you side hop, one, two, it's kind of like that. Then you can charge hook and clip through just like this. Um, the like like really shouldn't bother you at this point. Make sure you turn around. And you can get out clean, just like this. Uh, if you hate both of these and you want to kill all enemies, uh, I'll show you how to do that. First bat there. Second bat here. Third bat here. Then what you want to do is hookshot this guy and jump slash him like that. 
much slower, but it's an option. Do whatever makes you comfortable. You know what I mean? It, it is what it is. After after that, you go out of here. Uh, I timed a Hess over here. It's actually slower, unfortunately. So your best movement is to just do this. You can jump slash onto this platform. You can actually get like a good angle. You get good at this angle the more you practice it. It's a little scary, but you can do it. And you can roll this out. So, two options here. Collecting these rupees is not bad at all, by the way. Um, don't feel like this is insanely slow. It's really not even that slow. But that's one option. You can collect all the rupees to open the skate, or you can do this method. Uh, there's like an old stick slash method. That's slow as shit. Like, you're better off just collecting the rupees than doing that stick slash. I, I don't even know why that is a thing. But, uh... You can do, like, a roll method that's kind of like a quick... A quick get-through. What you do is you target this, and you kind of... See in between the gate and the wall, right above Link's head, there's, like, a line. You want to, like, line up with that. You want to line up Link's... The tip of Link's hat with that line. And see how Link can kind of, like, nudge into the gate? That's how you know it's a good spot if you can do that. And then you just side hop, shield flex to get a straight roll, and you want to hit up and A on the same frame. And he goes right through, just like that. Um, you can even buffer it if you suck at the up A input, but basically line up, reset your roll. Oh, it didn't work. There we go, that should work. You hold up out of unpause and just hit A, just like that. It's actually pretty easy. Unbuffer it anyway, it's pretty easy. But it's an option to buffer it. So four side hops, roll, roll. If you are low on bombs, uh, you're gonna need at least like five at this point. There's an extra bomb container here. It only wastes three seconds, and that's what the movement looks like. You can get it really quick. Otherwise, if you're fine on bombs, you can just roll it out like this. Go get the skull. Now, at this point, right after the skull, the quickest possible way is to do a backflip like that. Um, you know you can backflip when the... When this one's, like, reached its... When it starts to go up, that's how you know when to backflip. So I kill the skull, I'm over here. Oh, I heard the other one move up once, and that's how you know. Uh, otherwise, you might want to wait an extra second or something like that, so... Okay, it's down. Boom, just like that. When the right one goes up one time, that's how you know when to backflip. Hit the switch. Hook shotting is fast. This is a key you're gonna need, last key. Um, so this movement... It's a little tough. Uh, you're gonna have to do a camera call on the platform if you want, if you want to be optimal. Uh, I'll just show you the alternative too afterward. Uh, if you're trying to do the camera call and skip lens and save magic, you do this, target, roll, one, two, three, four. I already messed it up. You can't get hit by those things, it won't work. Just like that. At this point you target, and then you get an angle that's pointing like at the door like this. Just like that. And that's the lensless strap. Um, if you're not good at that, Look, I suck at this. I, I I still use lens, and I get the extra magic. I'm not even embarrassed. You can just equip your choose. And lens. Peek it out. Just like that. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Let's, I'm saying it, because I do it. Uh, the other method, like, let's say you void out. Let's say you're screwed up, and you're like, oh no, what, I 
couldn't get the platform I void out. It actually puts you over here. And I will show you the hookshot method as a backup for this. There's no way to tell where the platform is at this point. So what you can do is pull hookshot, and when the red dot kind of moves to the right, oh, just like that, you know the platform's close. Oh, let me get closer here. There it is. It's, it's kind of hard to tell at first, but basically the red dot goes from like a smaller red dot and it kind of like moves just like that. That's how you know. It's just something you need to get used to. Let's say you did everything perfect. You then enter this room, you want to first hookshot the rupee to the right. Uh, to avoid getting frozen by this guy, you actually want to do insta rolls. Normally we say don't do it. But if you don't, this guy can freeze you, just like that. So you want to do insta-rolls. Go on this rupee. And from this rupee's exact position, you want to shoot slightly above uh, this rupee to hit the hookshot target. It looks like that. Um, if you are not on the rupee position where you just grabbed it, it's going to alter where you shoot, so it can screw you up a little bit. But basically, where this rupee is, it points up. There's like a line. See this line right here, where the red dot is? On the tip of that line, that's how you know where to shoot. Easy. Then you can do this. It's that easy. So now, optimally, you want to throw a bomb in here, if you have the bombs. Just like this, and you would hop off around here, shoot the skull. He should land right on you. Yep, just like that. Then you would mash B and FW out. Uh, there's also a chew method if you are low on bombs. So you would switch to chew now and um, start cooking it. One, two, three, four thread flash, side hop. And that gives you a perfect position as well. Um, same deal, but for the sake of the tutorial, we'll move on with the bomb method. This is optimal. Okay, get out of there. So now we got two methods for this gate. You can either opt to do a weird shot, which is optimal once again. Oh, I messed it up. Go a little further right here, like this. Okay, and shoot the left of the ladder. Like so, and you can climb up. Go over here, edge of the boat, get the skull. It's like that. Uh, if you are low on bombs or if you can't really weird shot too well, uh, there is a stick strat that you can do. Basically, you target the edge here. One, two, three side hops. And you're gonna do a C-up where it's like, you see up and it's very, very slight to the right. Like, extremely slight. Like... Not even that much, to be honest. Like that. And you would crouch stab and then jump slash if it were to work. I hate the strat. I do the weird shot. One, two, three. Like that. It's like very, very slight. You barely change your angle. And that's what it looks like. Uh, I recommend the weird shot, but if you can't do it, you can try that out. So I'll, I'll show this again real quick. Three side hops. Slight angle change, very, very slight to the right. Crouch stab and then jump slash. You can jump slash again, or you can like side hop, it doesn't matter. Get the skull. Okay, now at this point, um, you're gonna want to put the Ocarina on hookshot. Because you want your stick in your bombs.
Please, Eo. Stealthos are going to start to spawn here and try to bother you on your boat. It's your boat. Don't let them try to bully you. You can actually stand up here and just past this white line. You can just stand here and chill. He can't get you. Once in a while, they can poke you if they're both here, but when, when it's just them by themselves, you're fine. I like to just ESS turn like this. It usually forces them off. Not sure why. Come on. You want these guys to fall off because it actually does reduce lag. They're still in the boat, it lags to hell. Okay, so uh, you have two options now. If you have enough bombs, you can either Hess or Super Slide. This is ri risky, mind you, but... Go right to the door. I get to the door and set FW in here. Make sure FW is in here. You don't want to set it before going in here. You get sent back before the boat. It's a disaster. And now you can do a Hess or a Super Slide across here. Oh, whoops. Um. Hover boots. You hold up after to get right to the door. That's the movement you want. Uh, unless you needed magic. So, say you needed magic. It's this pot right here. This is if uh, you made any mistakes with magic, or if you use lens, or anything like that. Otherwise, you do not need this. If, if you did everything perfect, you don't need this magic ever. It's magic perfect. But if you use lens, anything else, get that magic. Uh, otherwise, you'll be fine. And um, I'll show you Super Slide, and if you hate both, let's see, both Hess and Super Slide, what to do. Here we go. Okay, so what you can do is just target and do a Super Slide. A little slower, waste bombs. Totally an option, though. Oh, just like that. Hold up once again for that movement. Uh, if you are completely low on bombs and you hate both of those, you can actually just use the bridge. Good old casual way. Shoot the bomb flower. You can get across that way. That's fine. It's, it's viable. If you're just starting off or something, low on bombs. Back up, whatever you need. Um, but optimally, you do want to just do the Hess over this gap here. It's like that. So now we're going to roll here. Roll. Roll to the left. You can roll and... Well, you can actually grab the ledge, but we're just going to move on quickly. So this is now the BK skip. Uh, you want to hang off this ledge and climb up. Target. Turn left. Now you're going to do a long bonk. It's where you hold up and bonk. Uh, if you just, like, bonk normally, it, you might not get a good position. So hold up and bonk. Then you're going to hold the bomb overhead and side hop and release everything target and everything and you're gonna count flashes when you get the four fourth red flash it's the fourth blue flash right after is what you're looking for so that's that's frame uh, number one that works to to get it uh, the ledge grab this way out of unpause you want to hold left target and shield just like that you want big red as you grab the ledge you would then equip Ocarina over bombs, so you have Ocarina, Hookshot, Sticks, that's optimal. And out of unpause, you hold up and hit target. So that's with the fourth blue flash. 
If you get the fifth red flash, that's the second working frame, there's two working frames, uh, you would do something similar, except you don't hold shield, you just hit hold left and hit target out of unpause. And you get big red on the ledge once again. Equip your ocarina up and target. Jump slash into this cutscene, and then we face Bongo. Now the trick to keep Bongo in front of you, you actually want to hold down during this cutscene. Just keeps him in front of you. I'll show you what it looks like. So if you don't hold down, he goes behind you. He goes behind you. So you just want to hold down, and then you can get ISG. Shoot hand on the right, hand on the left, and then aim slightly above those hands, just like that. Run toward Bongo. That's the optimal way to kill him. Um, things can go wrong very quickly in this fight. I suggest practicing it. You may say, like, oh, practicing the bongo fight. That's silly. Practice it, okay? You're gonna need to practice adult too. It is what it is. It's not easy. Uh, it's easy once you get used to it, but yeah. That's just, it's just one of those things. And I'll show you a setup real quick for this cutscene skip. So there are two setups here. Uh, I'll show you the optimal one. Uh, you would target, do one ESS and just hold forward. You then target, side hop right, and you're gonna do a down, a, a roll downward, a long roll, untargeted, and hold shield. Oh, whoops. So, you're gonna side hop, down roll, oh, it's so hard to do. You can actually just shield turn and then up roll, like that. That's probably better, actually. This is faster, it's just a little risky. And that puts you one step away, so you would then... do one step in B. Okay, that's one method. Uh, and then I'll show you the other method, which is a little slower. But it's easier, in my opinion, because you don't have that weird down roll. So it's actually, t uh, from the position that you start, it's two ESS right. One two, and then you just hold forward. You're then going to backflip, side hop right, turn right, do a dry roll, and you're now one step away. Just like that. Uh, but for the sake of the tutorial, we'll move on with the optimal one. One ESS, grab heart, side up, turn, long roll and shield. Jeez, dude. I'm really good today, aren't I? Took a step. So yeah, if you take a step, it's 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 rip, dude. There we go. All right. So same deal. You want to hit um, A to warp out when the hearts fade. If you hit. A too early, you will crash the game. It, it's guaranteed to crash. Do not hit it early. I've lost runs to this. Just be aware of that. Make sure those hearts fade before you hit it. Just like that. Just play it safe. You lose the run. Do rolls like this. One. Two, three, stand on this lighter spot, get the last skull. And then from here you play Bolero. Go to Death Mountain Crater. I'll see you in Death Mountain Crater. After Bolero, you'll be uh, on the warp pad in Death Mountain Crater. You want to roll out here. Shoot the top of that bridge. Whoops, roll out and equip bombs. Do 
do movement like that. Start back walking, pull long, then long shot this fence here. I'm only going to show you one method for enter shop. Uh, you target here, uh, side roll, uh, left side hop, side roll, and untarget, then retarget, and then left side hop and roll. ESS right, drop a bomb, then ESS right, and shield it. And it should clip you in just like that. You're then gonna wanna buy Goron Tunic first. And scroll over twice on the bottom. Buy bombs, buy bombs one more time. This will give you a bomb refill to 40 and exit shop. You then have a gold skull up here. You wanna collect that. shoot the fence here and you're gonna make your way to Lost Woods. Back walking out like this. Then roll to the right, exit, get lost, re-enter. You can then hold down, do a single roll in FW. FW needs to be this entrance right here. You have another wrong warp coming up. This is extremely important. This is the only entrance that will work, so make sure it's here once again. Exit. And roll out to this fence. Boom, swag. Just like this. All right, you roll out to here, like right in front of the sign, basically. Uh, now you have two options. If you're gonna do Deku Hess, which is optimal, I'll show you how to do that first, then I'll show you the alternative which is a damage boost over the loading zone. Uh, if you're doing Deku Hess, you want to grab the skull from here. Roll. Roll. You can pull a bomb, and you're going to want to target this wall, turn left, to get a Hess start. Pull a stick. And you're basically going to stay along the edge right here of the wall. Equip hover boots. Whoops. Okay, so to do this, you can kind of like... Th th this Hess is kind of tough. Um, you can kind of get an angle like this along the wall, and you can do a slow ESS turn into this. And then hold right, and you can jump slash. You got, you got to be able to react to that fairly quickly, though. Just like that. So, like, a second after you clip, you have to react, hold direct right, and jump slash. Just like that. Uh, that's the Deku Hess. I personally do not like this method. It saves 10 seconds over the, the damage boost. So there is that. If you're trying to be optimal, that's the way to do it. Um, 10 seconds. Okay. Risk reward. Remember that. If you're trying to do the damage boost, uh, what you can do is run up here, equip boots, and run around. Cool. Try that again. Simply walk up, hovers, go around, ledge grab. Uh, you would then want to get the gold skull, boom, just like that, and hang off this ledge on the edge. Target here, ESS right, hold bomb. You're then going to buffer to, not this frame, the second damage frame. Equip hover boots, hold up and mash stick. Out of unpause, just like that. It's that easy. You're then gonna wanna roll over here, pass this hump. Okay. And that gets over the loading zone, so the Deku tree is unloaded. And you can look on the map, see where uh, the yellow arrow is, back walking. Um, like, in between those two... Like, stumps sticking out is where you back walk. It should be pretty easy. There is a gap here on Deku tree, so hold down all the way until you see the gap. And that's how you get in. Now, once you're in Deku tree... Whether you did Deku Hess or you did the damage boost, you'll be here like this with the hover boots. You want to put choose, hook shot, or long shot, and sticks. 
and then remove your boots. Do a single roll up, like a long roll. You want to go past this line, actually. And uh, there's two things you can do. I'll make a save state. You can either, so if this is like the first open part of the bridge, that's the second open part and that's the third. Uh, one thing you can do is aim for the third and slash the stick. And you can recoil past the navi text. Jeez, I think it would work. Maybe it's like closer to this. Maybe it's below it. Strat's actually really hard, no matter what you do. Maybe it's further this way. Well, either way, there's a way to get a recoil. Can't seem to figure it out right now. Oh, there it is. Okay. So that's, that's one way to do it. Um, looks like you're actually shooting further up here to get it. Or there is a different way where you can shoot down here, pull stick, and run. This is the optimal method. It's just so hard to do. Just like that. So that that's the optimal method, and then you have the stick slash jump slash method. Those are both navy trigger tech skips. Uh, pick and choose, practice them. They're not really important. I, dude, every, everyone fails those in runs. You know what I mean? I, it's so rare that I see anyone actually get that. But anyway, we're, we'll move on. Uh, there's more navy text triggers here. Uh, what you can do is target this, side hop, and hit A on the first frame he lands. Just like that. You can do that. Do movement like this, reflect the nut, roll up and talk to this guy. Roll once, hook shot the slingshot chest, get slingshot. This text is really long, so I will actually break this up and see you after the slingshot text. Alright, this text is god awful, it takes forever, so I just loaded a save state. Uh, so after slingshot text, uh, you want to target, roll out. Roll but don't hold up, and you can just exit like that. One, two, three. Roll up right here. You're gonna want to sh uh, long shot this web or the, the vines, I guess. You have another Navi tech skipped here. Same deal as the first one. Come on. Just like that. Walk to the left of the switch. You can get the skull. You then want to light the torch to get out. Uh, now you can actually keep the stick lit. Um, you you want to break sticks all along the way in this entire run, right? You notice I've been breaking sticks all along the way. There's a reason for this later. So uh, you can keep this lit and the trick to skipping the navi text again is to get a really close to this door. If you're not close enough, it does actually hit it. So, like, all your tech skips were for nothing. So make sure you're uh, against the door before exiting. Alright, and then you can swing and hit that guy. For some reason it kills him, if it's a flame stick. You can do a jump slash here. Uh, the trick to this is to... kind of delay your jump slash. And get a specific angle. That's the idea behind it. Get ISG off this guy. Jeez, I messed up. Yeah, you kind of delay it. Just a little bit after the web break. You want to get ISG, like I said. Grab these two tokens. Nice nut. Oh, and you know what? This stave state is messed up. I should have choose equipped at this point. So let's just pretend like choose were equipped and I'm on the right menu. Uh, up next we have crawl space skip. This is optimal. And then I will show you 
how to go around it if you can't do this or don't want to do this. Um, but basically, you target this wall, side hop, do a dry roll in the corner, side hop, down roll, or side hop, side roll, untargeted, so you get this angle. And then you're going to want to hold hook shot, and you want to aim along this, like, second uh, open part of the torch here. Right about there. So, like, a little portion of that hole in the torch at the top there is poking out. Boom, just like that. Turn down. Hold left to get your angle like this, uh, or your stance like this. And then you want to do a one frame uh, shoe backflip. So you get this position. Uh, it has to be like, you have to be holding down basically. And then hit A and shield on the same frame. Then side hop like this, and you want to press start and equip hovers. Now out of unpause, you continue to hold shield, and you hold down right, and you're going to roll as soon as you land down. Oh, whoops. Alright, we'll make a save state. Just like that. And you can get stuck and roll out like this. You don't want to roll too late. You're gonna, you're gonna be in trouble. You're gonna void out. Light this, and then you can basically just chew the wall against the Baba like that. Uh, if you hate uh, crawl space skip, if you don't want to do it, you hate it, whatever, right? Uh, the alternative is to. Rip. Light this up, light your stick. This is after you get the gold skulls and all that, by the way. And you can go through this way. You're gonna have to put bow on. This is much slower, this, this is like a 40 seconds slower or something. You would then shoot that. Oh, uh, there is a navi trigger there, but yeah, you, you go across. It's basically the casual way. Uh, I highly recommend Crawl Space Skip, though. It's really not bad. Alright, you get the Scold Skull right here. You're then going to want to take off hovers and equip bombs, chew, and stick. And you still have- you should have a jump slash stored still. Uh, if you don't have a jump slash stored, uh, just get one real quick because you need it to break the grass. Get your ISG. And now we're going to have to do 2 three, one skip and then I will show you an alternative and a backup. Um, so you can break this first piece of grass here to make sure you have the jump slash and the setup is target the wall, backflip, turn left, insta drop a bomb, backflip, side hop, one, two, three, four, five, hold up and do a super slide. You're then gonna release shield and target. Make sure you release those so you have an open camera where you can spin. Uh, you're going to need a perfect up left notch for this. If your up left notch is not perfect, you're gonna have to come up with some method where you like pause buffer a perfect notch, but basically you need a perfect notch. Uh, it will be required. Um, I will link uh, in the description watches that give you the angle that you need. Um, as a matter of fact, let me just pull it up anyway right now. That way I can show you the exact angle you're gonna need. Sorry, just bear with me. Facing angle. I'll set it up right now. Uh, so the facing angle watch will be 801db 3a uh, 3a6 and you're gonna want x16 Oh, uh, hold on. Help if I made it visible. 
And that 0xdffb, right? That That's the facing angle in uh, hex. So we'll be able to go over correct angle. All right, so the correct angle you're going to want on a perfect notch is db90. Um, if you're not getting this from your notch, you don't have a perfect notch, and you're gonna have to figure out something for that or do alternative strats. Uh, so, you know, figure it out, do the best you can. If this doesn't work for you, I'll show you other ways to do this. But for now, I'll go through this. Uh, so you wanna pull chew, hold down and get your angle. And you're gonna go to the eighth dark flash. So that's the eighth red. And this is eighth dark. You're then gonna hold shield. That's one frame, two frames. Three frames. Once you get that, equip nuts over Chew, and you're gonna do a mega side hop right. And that gets you into the loading zone. Okay. Uh, if you cannot do this once again, um, we do have alternatives. Or if you void out, like let's say you void out, you end up here. Um, you don't want to go for it again. What you can do is a weird shot by the crawl space. Uh, you can actually shoot along here. Now, you gotta be very careful. This has a chance of soft locking the game completely to the point where there's no way to get out of it. It's a console reset, which means a dead run. So be very careful where you shoot. You want to shoot not here, but like about here, much further below this like line point. If this is like a line here, you want to shoot like a decent distance below that. Just like that, that's perfect. I'll show you what it looks like where it can soft lock if I can. If you shoot too high. I promise you it's soft locks, it's a disaster. Well, not getting it. I've lost runs to this though. Oh, you can even ledge grab, huh? That's wild. But yeah, you wanna shoot lower. Just make sure you shoot lower. Don't play with it. And instead of doing 2-3-1 skip, you can then do 2-3-1. This is the casual method. You would shield this guy. Then this guy. Then this guy. Talk to this punk, and he'll let you in the Goma room. Um, so, you got the weird shot method, and you got 2-3-1 skip with that. You, it, it's... If you don't have a perfect notch, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, adapters have notch correction if you can get an adapter, but there's the options. It's it's one of those unfortunate things, you know what I mean? Then you have the Goma fight once you get that, though. You should have bombs, nuts, and stick at this point. Jump slash into the cutscene. Get rid of these watches. Uh, see up, have Goma look at you to start the fight. Now, right away, you want to get ISG. If you miss it, you can just do this. You can nut her first, get ISG after. But basically, you need her to be in the position where she comes to attack Link. You need her to be in this position for the wrong warp coming up. So if that position gets altered at all, the setup for the wrong warp will not work. All right, so from here, um, you want to hold target and simply walk forward. Don't roll, don't do anything else. It has to be a simple walk. ESS right, two side hops, and then you're one step away. Now this is the child wrong warp, so your visual cue is going to be when the black bars fade out. 
and that'll bring you to Spirit Temple. Uh, one quick thing uh, I forgot to mention with 231 skip. If you have a bad angle, sometimes you can actually get stuck in this room down here. Let's see if I can do it. No, I'm not sure where it is. Um. Where is it? Well, there's, there's a piece of collision. Oh, here it is. Okay, sometimes if you get a bad angle, you will mega flip into an unloaded room like this. What, the only good backup for this, this sucks really bad, but you actually do have to FW out. There's no other backup for this that is reasonable, and you would have to reset it and go back into Decker Tree, and you would then need to pick up more magic in Spirit Temple. So just be aware of that. Um, and that's also part of like the whole risk re reward thing, like depending on if you have a good notch or whatever, right? So that's your backup if you fall into the unloaded room. Otherwise, uh, other angles will just make you void out. You'll get a second chance and et cetera, right? But good luck with that. Any questions, you know, feel free to ask. Ask Discord as always. Um, there's a ton of people that have great extra tips and tricks in case anything else comes up. And of course, you can always message me. It's no big deal. And I will see you at Spirit Temple next. After you do Deku Tree Wrong Warp, uh, it'll play a cutscene where Naboru gets sucked into the vortex or whatever. Uh, the two twins will fly into Spirit, and you will be spawned here. Uh, now, at this point, um, you're going to want to get across to the other hand. You can either super slide or has. I recommend a super slide. You have enough bombs at this point, so you can do it. You can do a Hess if you want, though. I'm not going to show what that looks like because, you know what I mean. If you can backwalk Hess and you're going for that Hess anyway, you can probably figure it out. Uh, but uh, this is what the super slide looks like, and uh, you want to uh, put hook shot over your nuts, so you want bombs, long shot, stick. Uh, hover boots and out of unpause you hold down and shield just down and shield and you want to get to where link about starts to disappear and you want to release shield continue to hold down and just mash stick just like that uh, unset your FW because it, it was a wrong warp and you need to unset it and then walk up and set it again this overlaps with the chest coming down uh, you can also do a side hop uh, super slide. You don't have to do the back walk super slides. This works too. Same deal. When Link, Link's head about disappears off the screen, release the shield and mash stick. It's like that. Uh, if you fall here, um, say you mess up the super slide, what you can do is you're going to need an extra magic pot. Uh, if you have enough magic, you can just reset it like this. Let's see if we have enough magic for two. I think you don't. I think you need to farm magic, but let me check to make sure. So you would FW back, and you would need to reset FW. Oh, you do. So yeah, you should have enough magic for like one mistake, but you're going to have to get magic in spirit again. Uh, that's if you fall, and if you fall again, then what you can do is don't enter Spirit or go anywhere else. Um, just farm off these rocks. Pray for a magic drop, basically. Oh, just like that. Yep. And that'll give you enough to try it out again, right? Um... But optimally, you would not fall. Hookshot. Just like that. Okay, now you're gonna get Mirror Shield.
Target this chest, unequip hovers, side hop and hold down. And then you can just roll in. Uh, if you need more magic because you messed up, one of these pots should have it. Uh, oh, it's not that pot. Sorry. It's this one to the right. There it is. There's your backup magic. Exit. And you will learn Requiem from Sheik. It's actually Zelda. Don't tell anyone. Okay, let me do a... Save state to skip this cutscene. You would learn that and then like roll back into spirit and you would start here. Um, so there's two things you can do now. You don't have any strength, so you can't push that block. You have to do super slide hovers. And I'm not gonna go over, I guess I could go over it real quick. Yeah, I'll go over it. So you have two methods, you have pot super slide. Basically you pull a bum and you back walk tw with two steps and then hold up and get the super slide off the pot. So it's pull bum, one, two, just like that. Um, and then you would equip mirror, Goron tunic and boots at this point. Uh, you can also just do the two bomb super slide like this. This works too. If you don't want to do pot super slide. I think pot super slide's not bad though. It's pretty swag too. Uh, so you have two ways to clip through here. I will show you the extremely risky, but it saves like six seconds or something. Like it's a lot of time. Uh, let me make a save state. You're just gonna hold... Ah, oh, the pot hit me. Well, that's sad. All right, let me back this up. It makes me sad, dude. If you're doing the side hop method, just like... Get the pot to follow you. That way it doesn't hit you out of there. That's safe. It's like that. All right, so you're gonna wanna hold target and uh, shield. And to do the super fast one, everything's gonna be neutral. You're gonna let go of everything. Then you're going to go from slightly right of direct up on the joystick to up and then backflip. So that's what it looks like. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm neutral on everything until I clip through. Something like that. It's a very hard, it's a very hard strat. I don't like doing this strat because I, I, I can't actually fucking do it half the time. It's incredibly risky. Okay, I got it. <laughs> It's so hard. I don't I don't go for this. I'm never going for this and run straight up, but that's the idea. Uh, that was one working example. I went over it, so I don't feel bad. There you go. That's what it looks like. Have fun. Uh, the sane person strat is to get the super slide now, and you want to hold slightly up from down right. Um, target and shield, and you're going to release shield, and you're going to hold down and backflip like... When Link almost touches the block, and then you can pull hookshot. So, like, get your notch slightly up from down right. When Link about touches the block, you backflip and pull hook. Otherwise, you can get crushed. Just be aware of that. Like that. It's one of those things. You get used to it. It's, it's really not that bad. But we'll move on anyway. So, hit that switch, remove hovers, do bombs, choose and equip swap rang now. And I'm gonna show you my method because the other one actually sucks, it's not even faster. I'm not gonna show you something that's more difficult and slower, even though... the CCFG and Glitchy do this, I don't know why they do this, it's not even faster. They just don't know. Um, but basically, enter from the right side of the door. One ESS right, and once you're like past this texture on the ground, just insta drop a chew. And then you can turn right like this. Pull your ring. 
And off in the distance, notice how the second cubby hole, it just needs to be poking slightly above Link's head. For orang, one, two, three side hops and backflip. And that's it. It's that easy, nice and fancy. Then you want to void out. All right, now for this one, I don't recommend pot super slide. I'm not going to go over it because you have a high chance of getting unloaded room and Axel has a way of keeping it loaded, but it's slower. So I'm just going to go over the fast and easy method real quick. Uh, call the pot or aggro it so it hits you. Do a super slide. The important part about this super slide is you do not hold up. Make sure you're neutral on the joystick because you want to maintain this 2000 angle that I have. Put your angle watch on for this one as well. This is so you do not get an unloaded room. Okay. Um, you'll then equip bombs, long shot, and sticks again. And then hovers, and you want to hold target, shield, and hold left. Now when you get in this corner, just shield flick. And then you can hold up, just like that, and turn around and hold up. So I'll show that one more time. Do your equips. Equip hovers, target shield, left. When you're in the corner, shield flick. Then when you get here, hold up. And it pops you right through. That's it. Go to the statue. Just a simple bomb drop should be able to actually kill those guys. Let me try this again. Alright, we climb up. Go up to the statue, activate it. Oh, it's not working. Bad save state, lol. There we go. And then you can just simply throw a bomb at these guys. It's like that. Light the stick. That's that's pretty optimal. It's not even perfect, but it's pretty good. You want to then light these two torches. Get that gold skull. And from here, roll to this middle grate. You can clip right through it. Take off your hovers. Uh, unless, of course, you're... Well, there's two options. I recommend doing the weird shot out of here. Uh, at this point, I hope you're doing weird shots, and I hope you're kind of good at them. If you've gotten this far into the tutorial, you should at least know how to do them. Um, but basically, we have two options. I will show you the bad option first. Get the key. And I'll explain why this is the bad option. Uh, you would then hook shot up here again. Or actually hook shot the left side. And you would go like this. The reason why this is a bad option is because when you're up there in the air, uh, pretty often the keys can knock you into the ceiling above. And then the backup is to do a weird shot anyway uh, to get out. That's the only way to get out. Um, so just be aware of that. And I will cut this and show you the weird shot to get out and then we'll move on from there all right so uh i was just talking about how you can get stuck up top there and you would need to weird shot anyway as a backup um so not only is doing the weird shot a second faster it's much safer so i would take off hovers there and then if you can back walk weird shot go here target hit your torch uh if you need to do the standing roll weird shots you can do it like this as well you get the idea i prefer the back walks but highly recommended that you go for that uh worst case scenario i suppose you could do this Mm, you would need to kill this guy right here. I 
I really don't recommend this, by the way. But it's an option. It's a really bad option, mind you, but it's an option. But anyway, like that, there's your weird shot. Now this weird shot is required. In crawl space, uh, just below the right of the key door. Should be able to get some collision. It's bad. Bad spot. I'll go closer to the crawl space. That should work. Just like that. With some vines. And then you can exit there and re-enter to load it. Um, if you're gonna do the other version of the weird shot, what you can do is go near this torch, wait for this thing to pass, and then you can do this version so it doesn't hit you. Something like that. Did I screw this up again? Hard. Hook shot up, get the skull. Alright, so you have two choices here. Uh, if you want to do collapse skip and you're, you don't know if you're too good with it and you know, you want two like two chances at it. You know, you can get you can get this right here. This wastes about ten seconds. This is extra bomb juice. This allows you to do two attempts at collapse. Uh, if not, you can just skip it. Save ten seconds. Throw a bomb at this guy to activate the sun. And then from here. Uh, equip Ocarina over bombs and you can roll out of unpause. Otherwise, you're gonna, you can read the sign or the sun, whatever it's called. Uh, maybe not. But anyway, we move on. Couple rolls up. Shoot the torch. You're gonna want to land on this and uh, a quick little swag thing is you can do a quick lineup before playing ZL with this. You can do the swag shot, I like to call it. You just hold target and hook. And if you got the right line up, it would automatically shoot that, but I didn't get it there. Get the key. You gotta shoot this torch up here. There's another skull. Okay. You're going to go back across now and do the BK skip. Uh, at this point, equip bombs again over Ocarina. And if you got the big cojones, you can start pulling bomb pretty early. It's a little risky, though. But you can pull it all the way down here if you're really good. If not, just play it safe. Like this. Now, when Link uh, feels the explosion, when he gets hit, you actually shield. Um, I probably should have mentioned that. I was just doing it, like, fast, because I'm used to it, right? But basically, you target, and you shield when he takes damage there. So, now we have Statue Climb. It's one of my favorite tricks, actually, of the run. I, I really like this trick. It's cool. Uh, you want to target in the corner here. Straight target. You want to pull stick, backflip, and jump slash for a broken stick. Shield. You want to hold target and shield. Side hop. And then jump slash. Oh, no, it's two side hops, isn't it? Yeah, it's two side hops. Jump slash, boom. Two side hops. No, wait. Well, did I forget how to do statue climb? No, that was correct. Why didn't it work the first time? All right. Target, backflip, jump slash, side hop. Jump slash and hold shield. Release target so you're like this. Do a single shield scoot. It's just a step, just like that. Then target. 
one side hop, two side hops, and jump slash. Um, I'm going to show you what this looks like buffered, and I'm going to show you how to do it unbuffered safely. So when you're in this position, side hop, side hop again, and then release everything. And when Link's hat is like kind of just over... I don't know what you would call this, like the snake portion to the right there. That's when you know you have the first jump slash frame. You can hold up and jump slash twice. And you want to actually hold shield after the second jump slash, just in case, so... It looks like that. And you're holding shield after the first jump slash to play it safe. Now, if you get the later frame... This is the first frame that works. And this is the second. Uh, same deal, you can hold up and jump slash and hold shield and just spam jump slash to play it safe. And it's like safe. He just pokes, right? So you can just let it rip. And that's how you do it unbuffered as well. The trick is to hold shield after the first jump slash. And that's what happens if you get second frame. Um, after this position, you can either choose to do head clip, a mega flip, or a ground clip like Water Temple. There's three different methods to do boss key skip. Uh, I'm not too good with head clip. I will try to show you the best I can, though. I at least know the concept of it. So when you get this position, um, you want to keep holding shield and do down right and shield turn. Uh, you want to then equip your hover boots and backflip. And on the first frame, that Link lands. Not this one. This one. You want to backflip again and hold, like, right or, like, slightly up of... Or no, it's left. You want to backflip and hold left or slightly up of left. Uh, let, let's see if I can get it. And then you can jump slash into the loading zone. Nah, it didn't work. That's the concept anyway. Um, I highly recommend looking up a tutorial on this one specifically. I don't know it too well, but that is the concept of it. I do know hookshot extension at least. So I'm going to just show you that instead. But head clip is a thing. It's called head clip. I believe Count LG does it in MST. If you want an example about uh, of it, and I don't know any other, I don't know anyone else that does it. If I'm being honest, it's a pretty hard trick. But anyway, you can do hookshot extension when your head is like kind of in the snake here. Do hookshot extension, and you can just get through like that. And we have two different types of boss keys skips. The first one is a mega flip with iron boots. You target this, turn, do a mega flip. On this, around this frame, couple frames, you just equip iron boots. And then you can actually hear him land. It makes like a thunk sound. That's how you know you clip through. And you can take off iron boots, equip normal boots. That's one BK skip. The other one is a ground clip, just like water. Same as water. Um, I recommend getting ISG. There's a lot of lag in this area, and then doing the two. Just like that. Same shit. Alright, up next we have uh, Naboro Skip. I'm only gonna go over the optimal one. Um, I think it's actually easier than the old slower method. If you really want to go for the old slower method, go for it. You're gonna have to... I think it was in Skirty's tutorial, actually. So maybe look there. But I'm just gonna go over the faster, easier method. I think it's easier. So the cutscene plays. Okay, uh, when she starts walking, you want to hold left and shield. You're going to want to get broken stick. This is the setup for it. It's left and shield out of the cutscene. Boom, Link automatically stops. Then you just jump slash, broken stick. Hit nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, and then a normal slash. Go around the left side. You want to target this throne anywhere from like here all the way to here. You want to do this fairly quickly, by the way. Jump slash. Wait for the jump slash to finish. Drop bomb instantly. Hold left. Climb. You get this glitchy state. I didn't get it, actually. Wait for that jump slash to finish. Oh my god. Insta drop bomb. Up an A for left. I'm not getting it. Damn it. There we go. Hold direct up after that. And then after the white flash where Niboro kind of like gets hit in that cutscene, you hit A. And you should void out in a minute. Just like that. So I'll show that again. You do your thing, your nine hits in one slash, or nine crouch stabs in one slash. And then target the throne. Once the jump slash animation is done, insta drop, up and A, and then just hold up. Once you get the glitchy state, that's how you know you got it. After the white flash, A to release. Just like that. Uh, this can fail a couple of ways. I guess I should go over how it can possibly fail. Um, one way I was failing this was, uh, the first way was I wasn't letting the jump slash animation finish completely. And another way I was failing this, which I wanted to avoid, was I was, like, targeting before Link climbed fully. You want him to fully climb up before you target. So after the jump slash, wait for that animation to finish, and then side hop, and then once that finishes as well, you can target. That's the trick to it. It's really easy once you, like, recognize everything. It takes some practice, though. So don't, like, become discouraged or anything or be like, what the fuck's going on? Ask questions. Any questions come up, ask in Discord. Ask me. I got you. Alright? I got you, dog. Let's move on. Twin Rova. Um, Twin Rova is... Kinda RNG. Kind of a pain in my ass. <laughs> so, I'll go over what I can with this stupid boss. Now you're gonna want at least seven sticks in this fight. I think I broke too many in the save state. You want six to kill her. Uh, and one more for dot skip later in Garuda Fortress strats. So I'm just gonna put eight on and we'll just pretend like I have eight. Eight, eight, seven is optimal, but eight is really comfy. Uh, when you first start, you basically just have to recognize their patterns, and you want to move the opposite direction of both the witches. This becomes an intuition thing after a while, you just gotta get used to these stupid things. Alright, so blue is going, so I gotta look for red. Hope she comes over, hit her. Recognize where they're going, move in the opposite direction. Uh... This is bad. Okay, red is shooting, so I need to go in the opposite and try to aim for blue. Alright, that's two down. They are trolling. Alright, this is really bad. Well, I missed a cycle. At this point, I would be yelling if I were doing runs. So that's fun. Alright, so if they're this close, you can continually hook shot so that they go into the spin state. It keeps them in place, basically, until you're ready. You want a shield. Pretty self-explanatory at this point. This is just phase one. Alright, red is winding up, so we're gonna put blue in its place. And hopefully this will be the last one. Jump slash into the cutscene to get jump slash damage. 
You want that you want that jump slash damage. Alright, this is phase two. Oh my god. Uh the trick to phase two, uh optimally, is you want a hook shotter as the elemental damage is coming at you and then shield it to absorb it. To do this, you want to stand about past the halfway point of the platform. Charge hook shot in the last second you release and shield the damage. And for some reason it's not working. Just like that. Charge hook shot. Release last second and shield the damage. Oh, and on the third one, you actually just want to absorb it. Just screw that up. If you don't get it, you can just hook shot her after. So on the third one, you want to get close to her. Just like that, jump over, start breaking sticks. Uh, you know when to crouch stab her when her hand touches the ground again. That's the timing. Just like that. Or what you can do is ISG her. Hook shot. Just like that. Or you can jump slash it like this, get broken stick. If you're low on sticks. Optimally, though, you do want to break sticks down to one or two. So we'll do that for the sake of the tutorial. You gotta hit her six times. If you miss a, a, a hit and she, like, gets back up, you're kind of screwed because she'll be low health. And she'll shoot, like, random elemental stuff. You don't want that to happen. That's really bad. So do the best you can. Uh, the famous cutscene everyone loves, we're not going to watch it. So after the cutscene, the hi hyena's cutscene, you hold right and start rolling. Get the heart piece. And I will show you the quick cutscene skip for this one. You want to go over here, ledge grab, target. Shield scoot. It's a one step shield scoot. Dry roll. Up and B. You're one step away at this point. Just like that. Same deal when the hearts start to fade out. You can hit A. Okay. And this is where the magic, the perfect mag magic route comes into play. You should have enough for one more FW. Set FW right here. Roll in. Roll, roll, roll. This is your final gold skull. You can just third person right from the middle of the door. Good work. Um, if you are low on bombs, like completely low, you can actually farm these guys in here before you FW out. It's up to you. Uh, hopefully you won't ever need to do this, but it, it happens. Alright, they can drop bombs, and then you would just FW out after. Uh, if you did not have magic, um, what you can do is kill this guy to get back out. Just get broken stick. This is if you ran out of magic. Nice. Just like that, and the, it'll open the door. Uh, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's say you got it. Okay, now you want to do a super slide to get to this heart piece after that's all done. Uh, you can either backwalk super slide, and uh, you would then equip Ocarina over your sticks. So you want bombs, a hookshot Ocarina. And then once your super slide is done, get rid of those hover boots so you don't fall off. And you should get right on the heart piece, just like that. Uh, you can also do a side hop super slide. Works just like this. Perfectly fine. Ocarina, 
Whoops, bad tunic. Once it, once the super slide starts to fall, get rid of those boots. Perfect. Okay, you're good here. Should turn night about now. Start rolling it out. You don't want to backwalk or hess because the levers are stupid. I'm gonna get the skull right here. And you can actually hess to the other skull if you're good at hessing. If not, backwalk it. Hess does give you, like, better RNG with Lever and Gwaze, though. Looks like this. Not bad. Three rolls and start to pull a bomb. Right in the fairy fountain. Nice and easy. One, two, three, four. Play ZL and get Nara's Love, and I will see you after Nara's Love. After you get NL, just exit the uh, fountain. And uh, you're going to hold down right target and start back walking. Oh, whoops. It's like that, just flick down right. We got Wasteland. Alright, uh, I will show you... The best I can, Wasteland has in two different ways. So you want to start back walking. ESS left to start. After you go past the levers, it's like two ESS left. Best way to do this is probably with collision. So you're going to have to grind this out a shit ton if you want to do full wasteland. Um, probably use collision on GZ like this. ESS left, you go up the hill, you're going to ESS right to go down, ESS left, ESS right, ESS right, ESS right, ESS right. That's what the first half looks like anyway. Um, it's just one of those things. I, I, nobody can actually help you out with this properly. You're gonna have to just do it yourself, grind it out. Uh, what I can show you is an easier way to do this in two different Hesses. Uh, so you start normally. ESS left, Hess. See the levers, turn ESS right. Once you go up the hill, stop it and start cooking a bomb and get your lineup. And then ESS right. Oh, whoops. This is actually easier to do it in two halves, believe it or not. So yeah, go up the hill. Get your lineup again that you know is going to work. Because, in my opinion, the hill is the hardest part. And then you can actually do that in two halves, just like so. Um, if you don't want to do the Hess yet... You can just roll it out from the start. And I can show you how to do that real quick as well. So you just start back walking. And once you see the first set of levers disappear, you turn around and start rolling. Over this hill, then you start to move to the left. Up this hill. Then you want to roll down the hill. And right before the texture corner, like around this white spot area... You can move to the outside of that, stay wide. Stay wide of like this white strip. And then this next white strip as well. Stay on the outside of that. And that's what I look for usually. And you can back walk. It takes a lot of practice. Get used to it. Use your collision view in GZ. You'll get it eventually. You can third person target, get the gold skull. Yeah, man. And I will show you two methods of the rest of Wasteland, the second half. So you can actually Hess the whole way, or you can do a super slide. Uh, I'll show you the Hess first, so you target Swall, turn, and you're going to want to ESS left. You're going to want to just ESS left the entire way. This should work. Okay, 
And once you um, see the yellow marker on your map go around where the black target marker is, you can then turn ESS left so the, the yellow guy is straight. Just like this. Uh, and then you're going to want to, after that sign that I just passed, you're going to want to turn slightly ESS right. And actually, when you're untargeted, hit Ocarina. And this will lower your e uh, HES speed a little bit, which allows you to cross the west of the rest of Wasteland <laughs> without breaking it up. So I'm in the HES, I target and hit Ocarina. to slow down my speed and get an angle like that. I might have, uh... I might have turned not quick enough. So it's now scuffed. Oh, there it is. You get an angle like that, kind of, and I did hit Ocarina untargeted. And that's the way to cross it, full Hess. Um, say you screw up, and you're like, ah, jeez, hold on, let me see. I either didn't get the correct angle or something. You can actually just equip Hover Boots here now. And you won't sink. You're good. So that's a quick backup. So you don't gotta actually worry about hitting that too much. You do have a backup. Hover Boots will save you. That's the Hess method. Uh, second half. I'll show you a quick super slide method. Uh, so super slide method is when you uh, climb up, you target one ESS left, and then get your super slide started. And same deal, when you see the yellow marker guy, you can actually extend this with ESS on target retarget. And this will give you the proper speed as well to cross wasteland like this. You just gotta find the correct angle for yourself. Uh, I screwed up, but... It's one of those things, you gotta grind it out, you gotta practice. Wasteland is a nightmare, in my opinion. But that is Super Slide and Hess, and ways to get through the entire way, both of them. After that, you just roll forward. Get caught by guards. All right, now we have fortress stuff. Uh, I'm only going to show you the stick strap method because the old master sword method and then RBAing after, in my opinion, is not only way slower, it's actually more difficult and it has way more things that can fail. I, I seriously, seriously just recommend doing what I'm about to show you here because the other methods are obsolete and terrible. Old boomer shit that nobody wants to do. All right, anyway, so you want to get out of jail uh, and you want to hook shot around here. So see where this line is? This line on this wooden plank. You want to shoot slightly to the right of it and get something like that. And you can shoot anywhere from where this black line is all along this the left of this white line. This all works. And you can just shoot it, clip right through. Uh, learn that. I've lost runs to that because I was stupid, so learn that right there. Hookshot your chest. Grab your heart piece. It should be nighttime at this point. Uh, if it's not, something got screwed up and you'll have to play Sun Song and make it night. Then you would get the skull. here you want a side hop pull hook you can go right in uh, optimally you should have a decent amount of bombs uh, you would want to drop a bomb on this box stun this guard and at this point nuts and hook shot and stick are your equips break a stick on her to knock her out rolls like this jump slash into the cutscene or the text turn around IF ISG off of homie and we will fight a guard now with the ISG.
So you want to shoot hook shot up, full stick, and start spinning. If she gets away from you, you can nut at an angle. This is similar to the Dark Link fight. You can nut at an angle and get her like that. But that's all good. Let homeboy out of jail. He is so happy. Talk to him. And the reason why I dropped that bomb by that box was you can actually get out of here a second faster. Hold up right, and or up left, start rolling. You can cut corner there and beat him. That's how you know you're fast if you beat him outside. Down roll, hit the loading zone. One, two, three, four. Jump slash into the text. Same deal, get ISG. Now for this one, I believe you want a nut right away. Let's see. Nut off to the side, no. Yeah. She's being a pain. Alright, there it is. Make sure you have at least uh, nine nuts. Leaving here. You should not waste more than like 10 or something, but you want to preserve at least 9 nuts. So if you're down to 9, don't use any more. But it should be pretty lenient, so you should be fine. Then roll up, follow the guy. I'm gonna follow him out of here. Roll to the left behind these boxes and in here. A single roll into a jump slash for this one. ISG. I did not get ISG. Oh, dang it. Uh, Alright, well, we're fighting her again, Pog. The trick to these guards is to um, walk around them like this in circles. Man, this is so bad when this happens. It takes a lot of practice. A little bit of RNG, but it's mostly... It's mostly what the player does. I'll make a save state. To mess this up again. Alright, once again, single roll, jump slash, cool. ISG, there it is. Uh, and this one, you want to hook shot her again. So she goes into you, pull stick. Aim up. Just like that. That was a really good fight that time. Do counterclockwise around him. Okay, and this time you want to go the opposite of Homeboy. You want to go the way you came out. A uh, single roll up in this direction, and you can aim and hit these vines with long shot, then roll forward. One, two, then jump slash, get ISG. Same concept. That's the final guard. Get in there, dude. Talk to this guy in the cell. And you will get Gerudo card here.
She just basically talks about how incredible you are. You're like the best thing she's ever seen. She wants to, you know, be have you be a part of the Gerudos, whatever. You got the card, you move on. All right, now here, um, you want to start back walking and when Link's feet are about on this line, you then hit FW to stop yourself. Boom, just like that. And uh, I'm gonna show you the clip in here and then I'll sh show you like the other method, which is just to pay for it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so the clip in is the same movement as dot skip where it's like a down roll, a down roll side roll. Um, basically from this position, you will do one ESS right and then you will do like the dot skip method not like that it has to be the the tighter method and then you'll hold forward and jump slash this saves literally like a second it's kind of tough too maybe it's up a little more yeah i like that there you go yeah so i backed up a little bit too much but that's the concept behind it. Um, and if that, if you don't do that, just like backwalk and pay the guard to get in. It's fine. It's not even slow. Uh, so at this point, you want to equip your bombs and ocarina once you're in here. And you want to roll to the left to avoid a text box. There's a text box like right there. It actually wastes time. Uh, and yes, I did time backwalking this and hitting the text box. I'm just rolling is faster. You want a weird shot? Whatever method of weird shot. Get that. Get ice arrows. And FW out of here. It's like that. Uh, you want to start cooking a bomb and do a Hess optimally. Or a standing Hess afterward. Whatever you want. Or. If you can't Hess at all, just back walk all the way up here. This Hess is highly recommended, obviously, because this is one of the ones that saves a ton of time. Get the Skull Skull. Play Sun Song now. Alright, now this is very important you do this in the correct order, otherwise Epon is going to screw you. When you spawn here, what you want to do is play Epona's song immediately. Like, spam Ocarina. Like, upon spawning here. Just spam that shit. And play Epona's. If your camera gets altered at all from this position, Epona will spawn below. And, uh, it's gonna be timeless. But if you spam it, like I did there, she actually does spawn here. Um, if not... She will spawn all the way down here. And you don't want that. So, spam it. Call Epona. And then you're going to want to set FW right after this. Boom, just like that. And this is optimal because Epona needs to walk anyway toward you. It's pr pretty good overlap. And then you can roll. It's like that. Alright, archery. Fun, fun, fun. I hate this horse. Between me and you guys, I hate this horse so much. Uh, Alright, you want to talk to this lady while on Epona. Mash through and say yes. Uh, the quickest way to do this, I believe it's waste three arrows right off the bat. And then you can start shooting the targets. Uh, the first one is not as important, it's only a thousand. A thousand minimum. You want to hold toward the horse. Before getting that heart piece. Talk to her again. We're gonna do a second one now. Alright, this one I don't think you want to waste any, just in case. And try hitting this third target, try hitting hundos. You need 1500 for this one. 1650 is really not good, but it's enough. 
And uh, if you did Kajiro correctly, everything correctly in the RBAs, you should be able to hit A and get Booty Chest. No. If you're doing Quiver Dupe, which I recommend, um, you want to go over here, and I will show you uh, the backup in case you fail this or don't want to do it. You want to line up against this wall. See this dark texture right here? Just to the left of it. Turn around. You then want to equip Fish and Kajiro. You're going to uh, quick draw bottle, hit B, so it puts it on FW, and then swipe Fish. Get your line up again here. Do a flick, C up, get out of it, and then target. Oh. Oh geez, that's a bad position. All right, let me redo this, sorry. I was like, did I not do Quiver Dupe correctly? All right, so once again, we're lined up about here, just the left of that texture. See up, and then quickly turn around and retarget. You then want to do one roll and five side hops. Two, three, four, five. Roll, start cooking a bomb. Once that Garuda lady uh, is on screen, that's how you know you hit the loading zone, and this will activate the dupe. S back up to Epona. And you're gonna do a third archery now. Uh, basically, what this did, I'll, I'll give a brief explanation in case you don't know. What this did was it called the Garuda Lady. Um, so when you RBA'd Kajira, it gave you a non-glitch quiver. Originally, you have a glitch quiver that allows you to do Ash Chest. Uh, it fixes your quiver when you RBA Kajira like that. And then you load the Garuda Lady for one frame. And it doesn't set the flag for archery. So you can then do archery again to get 50 quiver. Now, you need 50 quiver for a bottle adventure coming up, so this is extremely important that you have 50. It can't be 40, it can't be 30, it has to be 50, okay? But this is the third archery. 15 hundo again. Jeez, I barely got that. And if you did everything correct, you will get the 50. It's like the... Okay, at this point you want to do Ocarina, Empty Bottle, Bottle 3, right, same thing, and then Milk, drop your fish and put it in Empty Bottle 3. And then Prelude. And that'll bring you into Light Arrow Cutscene. Uh, now, if you did not do Quiver Dupe, or if you're not doing Quiver Dupe, which you really should be, or if you failed Quiver Dupe somehow, like let's say you have 40 Quiver right now, what you're gonna do is go to um, Graveyard. I'll just show this back up. This so loses a, a decent chunk of time, unfortunately, but it is what it is. And then go through Graveyard to Kakariko. And this is Adult Archery. This is your backup. You would do this minigame instead. And this guy will give you the 50 quiver as a backup. Uh, once you were, once you get it, um, right? Like, let's say you do it, you would then do the same bit where it's like, okay, you know, milk C right, whatever. Get fish in bottle three. Keep bottle on B, and then you just simply prelude. And this should be light arrow cutscene. Spoiler alert, 
Sheik is actually Zelda. All right, I'll see you after the light arrow cutscene. After the light arrow cutscene, uh, you're gonna be spawned here, and you should have Saw on B. Um, this is the value 50, and basically what happens is uh, Rudo's letter on child um, will still alter your um, B button count, and if your arrows are 50, it'll give you Saw, so make sure you have 50 arrows once again, you'll get Saw. Uh, you then want to equip uh, bombs, long shot, and ocarina. Back walk out of here. Okay, roll, 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 roll. Right and side hop. Four rolls. Uh, maybe like five into Ganon's castle. You're almost done with adult two. I'm so proud of you. Couple more tricks though. After this cutscene's done, you're gonna want to hess or backwalk once again, but optimally hess. I'm gonna go to this fairy fountain. Just like this. All right, and now you're gonna want to clip. You uh, want to cook a bomb, ESS right, and then one ESS right. Hold nothing, and it should clip right through. Target ESS right, one ESS right. This is double D's. We'll just play this cutscene out. Uh, unless I have a save state. Do I have a save state? Let's see. After double D, I do have a save state. Let's go. After that, you uh, would equip fire arrows and exit. And back walk here. Pull your fire arrows. Quick draw that. Uh, once you get past the hammer rocks, you can. Oh, whoops. Shoot the skull with fire arrows and grab it with long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rolls into the bridge cutscene. We're going to be going into Ganon's castle just for um, gold gauntlets and using FW again. Okay, roll. And then you can just back walk. Don't fall off the bridge. That, that'd be bad. Hold up slightly and then you can turn down and back walk. Jeez, I messed up that angle. It's alright, though. Okay, now we want to go this way. Three rolls off, pull a bomb, and you're going to hash to Shadow Trial. Just enter Shadow Trial. Shoot the torch to the right. And we're going to traverse over here. Avoid that bubble. He's a little punk. Knock you out of the air. Uh, I would hug the right side to avoid like like as well. And from here, you can basically just there's an invisible ledge. Um, it's pretty easy. You can land right on that. Long shot back up top and grab your gold gauntlets. Easy. The section's easy. You got this. Alright, target and two side hops, pull hook. That's all, That saves a few frames, that movement. Um, now you want to equip swap stick, and then put FW on C down. So it looks like that, bombs, FW, stick, two rolls, and you're going to want a staircase hover right in front of water trial. It's the same, whatever method of staircase hover, you can either do two or three bomb. And then FW out of there. Uh, now this save state is actually bad. Um, this is these this is old strats that uses a save state. Uh, doing the stick strats that I showed you, you should actually FW back over here. So let's pretend like 
I did that correct. Yep. Boop. Okay, I FW back here. Um, I then want to equip bombs, long shot, and ocarina, and roll up out of here. Cool. We can get out of here. And uh, I guess this isn't actually worth it here, so just backwalk this. Pull your long shot. And once you see, like, this wall, you can just turn around. Long shot the skull. And then one, two, three, four. Four should do it. Now, after this skull, I'm actually going to uh, roll and drop a bomb to put Hookshot away. The reason why I'm putting Hookshot away here is if you mash text too fast when talking to this guy, if Hookshot's in hand, it can actually soft lock the game and it's rip. So just drop a bomb, keep it safe, show this guy saw. Just in case you mash too much. Okay, after you get that broken sword, play Sunsong. You want to make it daytime. This will be for a child three. And we want to do a mega flip now to the heart piece. Um, stand to the right side, target the tent. One, two, down roll. One, two, do a roll, and you can do a mega here. Should land right on the heart piece, or close to it. Yeah, that's close enough. Uh, worst case scenario, you miss it, you just climb up the ladder. It's all good. It's really not a big deal. Okay, and at this point, um, we want to equip fish on bombs and then put fish on C right. So you want Ocarina, long shot fish, and do a save warp. This is what your inventory should look like at this point. Uh, I think optimally you would have one or two sticks. So let's just assume that we did this in a little bit of a better way. Um... Yeah, inventory looks like this. Skull count, songs. This is what it all looks like at this point. And, uh, you know, saw and B still, but you're gonna save warp anyway. To get stick on B. Get rid of those watches. You spawn in Temple of Time. All right, you're gonna do the adult dot skip again. Whatever your favorite method is. Um, I showed you two methods. I'll just do this one for the sake of it. It is faster after all. Well, I just failed it, cool. And that's why we have two sticks. It's all right anyway. We need to break those sticks anyway. All right, so if you have more sticks, just break them, like break them against this wall until you're all out. And we are going to drop the fish and get that over B. Just like that. And we will just drop the sword just as is, just like this. So, uh... You know, since, since Empty Bottle was on C right, it puts the fish back in there anyway. So that's perfectly fine. And you want to keep your hover boots equipped as well. Uh, so that will conclude the Adult 2 section of the tutorial. Um, any questions, once again, Discord, let me know. I went through most of this super quick because at this point, you should be able to pick it up pretty quick, right? I have faith in you guys. And I will see you in... Child 3.